Eight, which left United isolated at the foot and needing Falcock to do them a favour by beating Aberdeen at Brockville today. Hearts needed to avoid defeat by Motherwell to steer clear of the dreaded playoff. So, United staring relegation in the face and missing several important players too, as Jock Brown describes. Dundee United manager Billy Kirkwood faces the same suspension problems as last week. Out are Dave Bowman, Billy McKinley, Brian Welsh and Gordon Petrich. Key men all. Last week's substitutes, Andy McLaren and goal scorer Robbie Winters, are on from the start, with Scott Crabbe and Sergio on the bench. And there's a huge responsibility on the skipper, Morris Malpass. He played a major role in the club's success of the 80s, including that championship win in 1983, producing form which earned him 55 caps. Now approaching his 33rd birthday, this is a crunch match of a totally different kind. Celtic have lost midweek goal scorer Willie Faulkner through suspension. Andy Walker, Brian O'Neill and Simon Donnelly are unfit, but John Collins returns to midfield after his chest infection, with Phil O'Donnell remaining in the starting lineup. And making his top team debut is centre-half Malky Mackay, signed two years ago from Queen's Park. Now 23, his progress at Celtic has been hampered by injury, but he is highly rated, and this is his big opportunity. And for a crunch match, a very experienced referee, Mr Andrew Waddle from Edinburgh. From the Dundee United point of view, it's a terrible way to have a near-capacity crowd for the last match of the season. But nothing less than victory will do. And there's the anxiety showing there as Johnson and Malpass go for the same ball. So the start for United, absolutely crucial. And they can expect no favours at all from Celtic. Still trying to retain form for the cup final in a fortnight's time. Good challenge made by Boyd on Winters, a very important one. Still United keep up the pressure. This is McLaren. And the first time effort attempted by Johnson. Well, the midfield players getting forward very quickly. They're Grant Johnson supporting the attack. They get into the box for the shot at goal. The ball hooked across there. Johnson arriving at pace. McKinley to O'Donnell. McLaughlin. Tackled strongly there by McInerney. Celtics throw again. And Jim McInerney did just enough there to help that on to O'Hanlon. That's Collins. Big stay. Collins again. McInerney. He's done it up by Van Hoydon. He's away from Daly, that's for McLaughlin. And still no conviction at all about the finishing. Really well worked through that by Pierre Van Hoydonk. To give McLaughlin the shooting chance. Well, it's on his weaker side, the right, but there's just no authority shown there at all. Christian Daly at full stretch there. This is Malpass. Now McLaren. Good defending by McKinley. Gets very close to his man there to make life very difficult for him. McLaren battling back well. Time here for Malpass. Stay very determined indeed. And was he fouled? Well, David Hanna seemed to catch him in the act of shooting right at the edge of the penalty area. The Celtic supporters certainly thought that should have been a penalty kick. Referee Waddle appeared to be somewhat unsighted there. But what a player between him and the incident. You see it here. One well by Paul McStay. He goes charging forward here now, setting himself for a shot at goal. Certainly appeared to be caught right on the line by Hanna. Here's Peter Grant striding out of midfield. He has McLaughlin to his left. And brought down there by Jim McInerney. A rueful smile. 
and an apology offered to McLaughlin in the passing. So the free kick to Celtic. Tosh McKinley over the ball. Mackay is joined by Hoydonk again, and O'Donnell in the box. The old carrier threat here. Daly did well defensively. McLaughlin to Van Hoydonk, back to McLaughlin. And smiling there towards the Dundee United supporters behind the goal. A lovely move that. Van Hoydonk's touch was delightful into the path of McLaughlin. Good strong headed away by Christian Daly. It was returned by McLaughlin. Look at this layoff. Delightful. And then Ryan McLaughlin again struggling with the final shot. And that's a big stay. Good dummy. Now Vata. Peter Grant available again in the centre of midfield. Taken late by McAnally. Jim McAnally living dangerously here. He's been involved in a number of fouls. And the referee Waddle has told him, I think, that's the last. An awkward one that for Grant. He may be in some distress here. Seemed to buckle badly going down. Well, a moment of real anxiety this for Peter Grant with a cup final two weeks away. Stuart Gray is coming on. Celtic supporters not happy with Dundee United but giving Peter Grant a terrific ovation as he is carried off remains one of the saddest sights in the game Tommy Burns goes across to investigate so the difference being made by Celtic is to put John Collins into the central role vacated by Grant in midfield here's Brewster that was close. First real chance at goal for Brewster in the match. Well, they're still tinkering there as Brewster sends that over the top corner. Celtic tinkering with the team. Lachlan Van Hoydon. This is Gray. Collins. Foul well from the rear by Perry. Well, the game being punctuated by a series of fouls, mostly, it has to be said, committed by Dundee United players. Because that reflects their desperate position in the league. And Hoydon from a long way out, it's fully 30 yards. A great effort! Relief for O'Hanlon as that goes whistling wide. What a good free kick it is. Over the wall, swerving and dipping. A great effort by Van Hoydon. Brewster helps it on. Here's Winters. He's very quick. Still in possession. He had support inside from Brewster. Didn't see him. Has to settle there for a the corner. Well, Craig Brewster in the middle, holding his head in his hands because had he been spotted by Robbie Winters early in the move, he was all on his own. We'll see this here. There's Winters now holding off two defenders, Mackay and Vata. We see Brewster appearing in the middle there. Barely enough time, I suspect, for another attack to be built up. The referee looks at the linesman and I think is satisfied that the first half could come to an end after four minutes of stoppage time so an undistinguished first half the tension has guaranteed that and some very heavy tackling by Dundee United very few goal scoring opportunities and Dundee United still with a match to try to win at half time Dundee United nil, Celtic nil. So a vital 45 minute period coming up for Dundee United and they made a change for the second half. They've got on Scott Crabb winning number 12 and he replaces Andy McLaren who had a thin time of things in the first half against Tosh McKinley. So Crabb for McLaren for the second half. 
And the news from the dressing room about Peter Grant is that he had a damaged knee, which does not require hospital treatment right now, although that may happen in Glasgow when he goes back home with the team after the match. There's still some concern about him. Here's Winters. That's a great effort, brilliantly saved by Bonner. Great reflexes by Pat Bonner. Well, what done there by Brewster with head flick on. There was Winters making space for himself for the volley. Great save from Bonner. A crab with a corner. Bonner again, fisting the ball to safety. That's Johnson to McAnally. Looking for Crab again. Attempting to keep the ball in play. Couldn't quite make that. Former Hearts player. Well, anxious moments there on the United bench. Billy Kirkwood on the left of the picture. Gordon Wallace on the right. Well, the Celtic supporters clearly in good heart, despite not being able to get into a lead here. And looking forward, of course, to the cup final in a fortnight. First of the ball. Right again. Daly under pressure from Van Hoydon gives McLaughlin once more. Can he make it this time? No, and what run for McLaughlin. Well, he gets a hump from one of the supporters behind the goal. An error by Christian Daly. McLaughlin driving in the post, he kept his head well, Look as though he may have the composure, it's a good save by O'Hanlon. That's great, possession, play by Celtic, quite happy to keep the ball here. It does spell complete disaster for United, there's McKinley again, now McLaughlin, McKinley supporting. Collins always available on the touchline. A chance for Van Hoydon. Well, a chance of the match without question. Delightful build-up play from Celtic. And Pierre Van Hoydon really had the chance to bury this. John Collins doing some marvellous work coming into the left. And that delightful chip beat David Craig. There was Van Hoydon steadied for the shot. Which skimmed the bar. That could have been the end for Dundee United. Handball there by Mackay. And here's Scott Crabb. Sergio reacting. It's off the crossbar. Well, hands to go to heads among the United players. They can't believe that. Sergio can't believe it, he was sure he'd scored. Return by Scott Crabb, reaction there from Sergio was swift. He lift the ball over Bonner and off the bar. Quarter of an hour of the match remaining. And perhaps quarter of an hour of Dundee United's Premier Division life. Here's Van Hoydon. And a chance for O'Donnell, this could finish it. Magnificent finishing by O'Donnell. And surely now it's all over for Dundee United. Well, a terrible error in the end here yeah, as Van Hoydon had possession. David Craig intercepted, then goes to a terrible fine call. Robbed by Phil O'Donnell, and that was top class finishing. Well, for Phil O'Donnell. It's goal number seven of the season since he signed for Celtic. Well, fine play by O'Donnell. Well, they quit now, I think, realises relegation is inevitable. David Craig's hit up. That was Vata. Daly to Hanna. 
Viva Winters needing support in the middle against it and Sergio what a chance that was for Sergio well, that just about sums up Dundee United season great play again from Robbie Winters here as Hannah played the ball across Robbie Winters played into that very dangerous area Sergio reacted quickest of all well, what a finish it was Stuart Gray into the gap. Van Hoydonk is there. This is Bata. What a stoppage time here. And Dundee United's last match in the Premier Division, at least for a year. So a free kick this time to United. Van Hoydonk goes down. Getting some abuse from the United supporters in the far stand. Compton again, here's Mark Perry, can he keep it in play? He's managed that, that's a good ball in. Well, Bonner certainly in trouble with that one. Well, the referee Andrew Waddle checking with his linesman. Back to McAnally. Touched on by Mackay, who can be very pleased with his debut. Now McKinley. The referee checking his watch again. But fully a minute of stoppage time. There can't be much more to go. His mouth pass comes forward. Bonner under pressure. And it's deflected over the bar by Craig from Hannah's shot. That was truly incredible. Well, that tells you everything about the Dundee United season. Quite amazing this. Bonner drops the ball. A tap in it is for Hannah. It hits David Craig and goes wide. Well, that really is just incredible. Billy Kirkwood, I'm sure, watching there would just have to shake his head in disbelief. The manager cannot legislate for things like that, that's for sure. Some defiant chanting from the Dundee United fans. Another late tackle there. Pierre Van Hoydonk goes down, and Christian Daly's in trouble this time. Jim McAnally just there to that, and Daly is ordered off. Well, what a tragic end to the match and to the season for Dundee United. And the card coming out also. Jim McAnally in trouble, that's what that's about. He lifted his hand, Daly. He had no argument there about the decision. And Jim McAnally, I suspect, is going to follow him, is he? No. The referee checking with his notes and trying to calm things down, perhaps. But Christian Daly or the door. What an end to the match. Well, there certainly had been a bit of niggling going on with Van Hoydonk. Vata plays it in. It's away from Scott Crabb. McKinley returns it. There are some weary players out there now wearing a tangerine of Dundee United. They certainly have been full of commitment and effort this afternoon, but... They've had no luck at all, and they've not been able to get any passing going of note. And it's all over now. Dundee United are relegated. Celtic end the league season with a victory. The victory provided by Phil O'Donnell, 15 minutes from the end, after a bad error from David Craig. David Hanna there in tears as he was off. It's been a tragedy for Dundee United. Celtic playing with composure well within themselves and certainly good value for the win but for Dundee United it's the end of a miserable season players staying on the field I think and prepared to go to the supporters for the backing they've had this afternoon Morris Malpass is going to take the United players to the supporters to show their appreciation for the backing 
especially this afternoon, but it wasn't enough. And the United could make nothing of this match. And when they had scoring opportunities, they were denied by bad finishing, bad luck. And for Morris Malpass, good for thought as the skipper leaves the field with thoughts for the supporters. But for Dundee United, the inevitable tragedy has happened. The final score at Tanadise, Dundee United nil, Celtic 1. Really a major disappointment, obviously, but now you've had time to let the dust settle a bit. What are your feelings at this stage? Well, it was a, real, a realisation for myself uh, four or five weeks ago that it was going to be a major task to keep the club up. Uh, I started formulating plans then, uh, whether we stayed up or whether we went down, that we needed uh, some major surgery about the place to get the freshness back and uh, just start afresh again, hopefully build a team to get us out of the first division and to uh, challenge in the, the Premier League as well. What did you find when you came here that led you to that conclusion that things were in such a bad state? Well, the quality that you're needing uh, to win games, uh, whether it's defending or whether it's uh, up in the attacking third or taking your chances, and uh, that's been the feeling since I've took over seven games, and I'm led to believe that that was the case for uh, near enough of the whole season. Now you've got a, a new task to perform here. Uh, what backing have you had from inside? What's the board attitude to the state of affairs now? Well, they're completely uh, behind me. I know that might be mm -hmm. uh, the wrong thing to say there, but they are. Uh, they're exactly the same thoughts of, as I've got, that we need the better quality players here to get Dundee United back to where they were before. Now, Dundee United traditionally uh, built on youth. You don't really have so much time for that. Can we expect a few transfers in and out over the close season? Oh, most definitely, yes. And will there be a lot of money being available for the purpose? Yes, most definitely. It was a very physical game. But, uh, I felt the guys competed well in that, that respect, uh, as they have been doing recently. And we also managed to have spells in the game where we, we played very well. You made one significant alteration in Brian McLaughlin's role to give him even more freedom. How do you think that worked out? Very well. I think you know he's a very, very special, talented uh, wee man. And uh, if he starts to score a goal, then I think he'll become even more special because he's got so much uh, repertoire to his skills and abilities. Tremendous. He's got a great change of pace. Uh, he's got a great awareness. Uh, and once he starts to score a goal or two, I, I think he'll go and become an even better player. What is the problem, do you think? Obviously, you've talked to him about that. What, what do you think it is? Well, I think he, he's suffering from uh, Danny McGrain-itis. He had the exact same <laughs> thing. Once he got inside the, the penalty box, uh, it's a massive nosebleed. Uh, I think once he scores the first one, I think uh, he'll be a lot more confident to get into the box. I think the more he misses, I think he feels he's not going to score. Uh, but once he gets the first one, I hope he's uh, saved them for the cup final. And what news of Peter Grant? Well, unfortunately, at this moment in time, it looks uh, very, very doubtful. Uh, he's, a, he's a quick killer and he's a very, very determined uh, man. Uh, it would be a tragedy if he misses out of the cup final because he's been our best player easily this season. Uh, and I think it would be the second one he's missed because he missed the 88 Cup Final as well. He's missed the, the Coca-Cola Cup Final uh, this year. Uh, so we're hopeful, you know, we'll, we'll keep praying and then hope that the wee man makes it because there's nobody deserves it more. One final question, the league season, your first league season in Charlotte Celtic, over the piece, are you satisfied? No, not at all, not at all, uh, nowhere near satisfied. Uh, and, and we know that uh, that can never be deemed as acceptable for a, for a club like this to, to have so many draws and uh, no win as many games as we should have done. Um, but that's something, we know the, the reasons uh, for that, uh, and that's something that we'll hopefully put right for the Saturday next season. So Dundee United relegated for the first time in 63 years. Hearts 2-0 winner of a Motherwell guaranteed their premier survival, while Aberdeen, who are 2-0 winners of a Falkirk, now face a home-and-away playoff with Dunfermline to determine whether they'll still be playing with the big boys next season. Well, the game itself was disappointing, Derek, mm. but Dundee United are down. Dundee, is, as we know, are, are now, uh, they've missed out on promotion. As a Dundonian yourself, that's obviously a very disappointing state of affairs for the city, isn't it? Well, they were hoping five or six weeks ago to play each other in the derby games in the Premier Division. You know, it's going the opposite way now. I think the only thing that can be done in Dundee is just let the pubs open all night and just let them drown <laughs> their sorrows in the one night. But they've got to get on with it. They know 
Jim Duffy was a wee bit unlucky with Dundee. Mm. And, uh, of course, uh, Billy Kirkwood's gone there when, really, Dundee United were destined to go down. So they have a lot of work, I think, to do next yeah. season. That's no consolation, but even a win over Celtic today no. wouldn't have helped United. But you've got to concentrate on the game in hand. Mm. They had to win that one to have any chance. And, and they showed a lot of determination. They ran themselves into the mm. ground, but they just lacked that little bit of quality. That yeah. was all. They missed chances. They've had a bit of bad luck as well, which yeah. I suppose has, has been the problem for much of the season, in fact, hasn't well, it? Well, they've scored the lowest goals in the league. I mean, they've only scored 40 goals. And, I mean, this is unlucky here. I mean, they, they have had bad misses as well, but things like that just weren't going for them on the day. That was Sergio. He just came on as a substitute. This is a good, the best chance, really, of the match for Dundee United. A good ball in there from Winters. And really, you've got to hit the target there. I mean, you're, you're 12 yards out, and to miss kick it like that is, is a tragedy. And uh, that's what's cost Dundee United all season. He was, he, this sums him up. I think Jock said that in the comment. This actually sums up the whole of the Dundee United season. David Craig's done all the hard work there. He's gone into the goalkeeper. And really, that's a bad miss. You, you know the players in front of you, and Hannah's just got to lift it over the top when it's in the net, but uh, for them, it wasn't to be. Yeah. Just a, before the sending off of uh, Chris Delaney at the end, no argument about his sending off, but maybe Pierre van Hooydonk should have gone too. Well, it was two men involved again, it wasn't it? Now, we're now talking about 30 seconds of the match left. It's the last game of the season. Dundee United are down anyway. Mm. The referee, you've got to think. I mean, the common sense rule for me, but he sent him off. Disappointing again, isn't yeah. it? The Celtic goal, well taken, but yeah. a bad mistake by David Craig, which well, uh, it's, he it's, won't need reminding. If the inexperience again we're talking about at the back, there's no well short Petrich here. You wouldn't have thought they would lose a goal like that. Just to punt up the field there. Van Hoydonk does well there. They get by Daly. Just... And David Craig gets caught there. I mean, it's a thing you can't do. You're the last man. You can't get caught with the ball at your feet there. Phil O'Donnell does well. I mean, that's a great finish. You can't fault the finish. But uh, the youngster's inexperience there. I mean, he's done everything right. He's read that well. He just cleared it there. He just tried to be constructive and do it. But he get caught out. And Phil O'Donnell couple of strides and sticks it in and that's a, a marvellous goal as far as they're concerned. Yeah. From Celtic's point of view, they have the cup final to look forward to, obviously. They're off to Italy to prepare for that. But I think Tommy must be concerned about the fact these teams still aren't scoring enough goals. Yeah, well, that's the problem. They're creating chances. That's a good thing for Tommy. If you're not creating chances, do you, then you've got to worry. But mm. they are creating them in the games. And mm. I think against a, a club like Airdrie, mm. if you, you won't get many chances because they'll have plenty of men back behind the ball. And, and if you don't take your chances, then you're going to struggle. Yeah. And Brian McLaughlin, tricky player, beats mm. men, but he doesn't hurt teams enough, does he? Tommy said it all there, and we've said it on this programme before, I mean, he, he does well, he can beat men easy, he floats by them, but it's in the last third of the park where things matter, whether it's a good cross into the box or a shot, has got to be there, and he's a young man, he's, he's a young lad just come in this season, I think he's had a marvellous season, but he could be such a better player, he knows he'll work on that, it'll come when, when he scores the goal, Tommy's right, once he gets his first goal, that'll give him the confidence, mm. but uh, he's, I think he's got to work on it in the last third of the park. And this is a great chance. Van Hoydonk, again, we keep saying it, he's not the greatest player in the air, but uh, really he should be hitting the target with crosses like that. I mean, he's, he's chested it down, he's done everything right. Look at that over the bar, you've got to hit the target.